Hey there, this is Terrence in Photography in 123, and today I'm going to show you how to copycat your way to make pro quality photos. But before we get there, I'd like you to look down and hit subscribe. The reason I want you to do that is I need to get to a certain level of subscribers before I get compensated from YouTube, and by doing that, I'm going to be able to get more content on this channel. So that's going to benefit you and me. So go hit subscribe right now. You might be wondering what I mean by copycat your way to pro quality photos. And what I'm talking about is giving you really an exercise to build the skills and the eye that you see pros have in their photos and give you that skill set. And what you're going to do is actually copy what other photographers do in their pro quality photos. What this entails is you taking a look at a bunch of photos that you really like from a photographer, looking at a couple of them and figuring out how you're gonna replicate that exact photo. But I'm not talking necessarily about looking at Instagram photos or on Flickr or any of those sites. And while there's a lot of good photos out there by some really good artists, I'm talking about the top caliber photographers that have a name, sell their art for a living, and have books published on them. The first thing you are going to do is head to a library or a bookstore. I'm not talking about Barnes Noble Online or Amazon.com or Chapters or Indigo.ca. A real live bookstore. And you're going to look for something. You're going to look for things like this. Books by pro photographers that do art photography or uh, other kinds of architectural or uh, other professional levels of photography, flip through what they have and find a photographer that you like. What you're going to do when you find a photographer you like is zero in on some of the work that they do in a specific domain. Uh, some photographers are in a few different areas, but you know, you're going to get a lot of them that are purely uh, portrait photography or architecture photography, uh, landscape photography, and you're going to want to stick to a, a specific domain, specific genre, niche within that, uh, that, that style and find a photographer that you want to replicate. So for example, here's a great portrait book by Fergus Greer. Lots of great portrait photos in here. Uh, Fergus has done a lot and lot of celebrities see some, uh, some great artwork in here of various celebrities, rock and roll stars, uh, political icons, that sort of stuff. If you found a photo book like this and you're, you're interested in it, whether you're at the library and you're going to borrow it or you're going to buy it from the bookstore, or you're at the bookstore and look, just take, take your phone and take a couple pictures of the photos in the books that you like. And what you want to do is start looking at six core things about the photo and I'm going to explain those six things in a second and you are going to follow replicating those core elements in the photo. Let's take an example here. Beautiful portrait, Donald Sutherland. Fantastic Canadian actor by the way. Uh, really good photo. I like this one a lot. Uh, if we look at this, the first element we're going to consider is composition. How did the photographer compose this? So you're looking at the framing of the subject, background, and foreground in their photo and try to understand what is positioned where. Is he going with the rule of thirds? Is he using the golden, um, golden rule to compose? Is he using some other composition technique? What you want to do is look at this photo in depth, think about how it's composed. So the, uh, the subject's head is a little bit to the left in the photo. The shoulder, the higher shoulder is about two-thirds up. His body's taking bottom two-thirds. There's more blank space on the top third outside of his head. And certainly his face is more the subject and in you know, almost to the foreground because it's front in. So if you're trying to replicate a portrait shot by this guy, this is the first thing you want to notice is how is he framing the subject. The next trickier part of looking at this photo is how is he doing the lighting? Lighting can be a mystery uh, to photographers, and especially when you're looking at a photo, it's not very clear sometimes of how the lighting is being done. 
but you just need to look carefully. So where, where do we see the shadows and where do we see the light spots, right? Clearly his face is being lit from probably just slightly behind uh, and uh, above the photographer coming down a little bit. And I think it's coming also from the left of the photographer against the subject. It's dark on this side. So from the right, there's no lighting or very minimal lighting and potentially uh, looks like maybe some lighting coming from down, but that's probably the one that's coming down and above. So there's probably two lights on, uh, on Donald here. So you'd want to replicate doing two lights. Now that may not be correct, but that's going to be your first step when you're replicating this portrait shot is do two lights in those two positions and see if you get the lighting the same. Next up, we're going to assess depth of field. Specifically, is it shallow or is it deep? Now, when you have a photograph like this, you might think, oh, well, I, I see a lot of detail, but actually you see a lot of detail in the face. But if you look at the back of his jacket and even the collar right here, I'll try to get that close for you so you could see not very much detail. It's already starting to fade out. And that's probably only three to five inches uh, from behind his nose. So that tells me he's using a pretty shallow depth of field. Now, looking at the face, the nose to the eyes, they're pretty good in terms of clarity. So it's probably not a super, super open lens. It's not, probably not a 1.8 or 1.2, but to, to be certainly lower than F4. So you'd probably want to start somewhere in that range and do shots like that, a couple of them, to see how you're going to get that same look for depth of field. Next up is shutter speed. So we look again at the same photo. We will see what? See a subject? There's no movement, no blurriness. So uh, in portrait photography, it, it's, it's pretty evident what they're usually doing, but it's going to be a somewhat faster shutter speed to make sure that they're, um, they're not getting any blur in the subject. So the subject is nice and crisp, but it doesn't need to be ultra fast, uh, especially given flash and light fusing a flash only syncs at a certain speed with your camera anyways, with the shutter. So they're probably using, I'm going to say, uh, one two hundredth to one five hundredth of a second. I mean, maybe even one eightieth, depending on the scenario. But it wouldn't be any slower, and certainly wouldn't be any faster than that. If you're looking at a different kind of photo, if you're looking at um, uh, something that's been blurred out, with when you're doing waterfall photos, like in my waterfall series, uh, you can see the misting, blurring effect. That's from a long shutter speed. If you see a car coming across the racetrack very, very fast, and maybe that's the the type of photos you're looking at and it's frozen perfectly, very fast shutter speed. But if you see some blur to parts of it, that means they've slowed down the shutter speed. So you really need to look at the photo and understand whether the shutter was going fast or slow. So the next question is zoom length. So old Donald here, do they have a, uh, a wide setting on their lens or do they have a, uh, a zoomed in setting? Now again, with portrait photography, it's a bit of a giveaway because it's it's a pretty specific range people tend to shoot portraits in. Uh, one of the things you could tell is with a, a, you know, a wide lens, you're gonna see uh, the face is gonna look a little larger in the nose and the eyes than normally would for them. And with the very long lens, as things are gonna look a little more condensed and, and thinner. Uh, I would say old Donald here is looking pretty normal for a portrait shot. So likely in the 80 to 100 mil range that they're shooting at, but again, this would be your starting point when you're doing your uh, your tests, your experiments, and you're gonna write that down and you're gonna go with that and you're gonna see how those photos come out like that and adjust until you get that kind of quality. And the sixth and final element is one I like the most about photography and how a good photographer can bring it, is looking at this, what's the story? What's the, what are they trying to convey? The expression, the message, uh, and different kinds of photography would have different levels of depth of story. Some could have uh, much, much deeper than others. Portrait photography, I think it's going to depend on the photographer and the subject and the chemistry between the two and, and what kind of mood your, your subject is in. But you know, you're looking at Donald here, he's in, in, in contemplation, he's thinking of something, you can kind of almost see a smile breaking on his face. 
looking over to uh, the photographer's left or to his right. So maybe he's deep in thought about a, a moment that he was, you know, kind of fond of and had a good memory of, but not necessarily busting a gut laughing here uh, or uh, emotion, uh, emotionally stirring him up too much. So when you, you see that you, and you want to replicate this, you'll have, uh, obviously have to direct your subject to do something like that. Um, but depending on the type of photography, if you're doing a scene or something else and there's something else transpiring or there's some other story unfolding, you might be able to recreate with different objects and items in the photo to create that story. So it really depends on the photo that you're trying to replicate. So those are the six core tips you want to follow when you're looking at copying a pro photo and then making your own pro quality photo yourself. So you're going to be looking at things like composition, the lighting, lighting is very important, uh, depth of field, zoom, shutter speed, and is there a story in there? If you could write down all of those for a photo you like from a pro photographer, maybe get three, four, five of the photos uh, that have elements you like, print them out, think about them, write notes down on this, and go out and try to take a photo in the next week with those core elements captured. That will push you to the edge. That'll push the envelope and make you a much better photographer by copying what other pros do. And my recommendation is don't stop with one photographer you like. You want to hone your skills, try different styles, try different photographers. You might find a niche you really like and want to work on a lot, which is fine, but while you're getting your skill sets built, you want to do as many different photographers and many different styles as you can to hone various parts of your skill set until you're ready to get to that point of specializing in a more niche area. So go out, take those photos, and hey, if you take some great ones, I would love it if you could comment below, maybe post a link to where you have them, if it's on Flickr, Google Drive somewhere, so people could take a look, or if you could post the photos in the comment, I'm not sure if you can, give that a try. I would love to see your photos and see what you've done with this. And one final note, if you want to like this video, that'd be awesome. If you want to uh, subscribe, if you haven't already, please do so. Share this with anybody who may benefit because you know what? The value of this video is more people seeing it. You get this in front of a lot of eyes, everybody's photography moves up. That is what we want, isn't it? Lots of great photos out there instead of most of the crap you see out uh, on the internet half the time. If you are interested in my free sunset guide, there's a link down below. You can go to my website and get my free uh, secrets of how to great how to take great sunset photos. Hopefully this video uh, worked well for you and uh, I will see you soon.